what is our warriors and welcome back to another video another training vlog as you can see uh, I think I mentioned in the last video I got a new toy a drone um, this is the the mini 2 I don't know why I've waited so long to get one like they're so much fun but yeah so I expect to see uh, much more random pointlessly cinematic shots of me making coffee and flying a drone around so what else do you expect on this channel also not the usual pour over this morning this is a, yeah, a jet boil, which is what I use to make coffee, like when I'm at the beach or out and about, but it has a Katia thing. This is really good. If you want to make coffee outside, 10 out of 10. <sighs> More coffee. I'm not drinking coffee outside this morning. It is absolutely freezing at the moment in the UK. There is like snow in the entire country apart from here because I don't know why, they never get snow. This is the, the Costa del Dorset, we just get sun, and that's it. It's basically Spain, where I live. Also, Sue's checking in with the, the team no haircut, because I have not had a haircut in like three months. Um, and, it's, and it's to the point now in which that I, could, I can almost do a top knot, or like a, a little mini man bun. And I'm debating whether or not I just fully embrace the, uh, the handstand movement culture man bun extraordinaire or uh, or I chop it off next time. So if you have an opinion, <laughs> let me know in the comments. I don't even know what day it is today. <laughs> it's, every day is the same. I just thought I'd quickly share some breakfast with you because I haven't made this one for a while and I forgot how much of a great recipe it was. Uh, actually, this is a, a poached chicken with like a Thai influence. It's, it's, it's actually banging, it's amazing. I used to eat this all the time for breakfast, especially in winter, because it's just it's, it's so warm. But yeah, anyway, I have a, a full recipe for that one and I'll link it in the description down below. I am redoing form cues for the app. I think there is currently 300 exercises to uh, to redo and that's only the strength stuff. Then there is probably another 100, 150 for the flexibility. I hope you guys appreciate it. We're also coming out with some audio form cues as well because a lot of people have been asking that so we're working on that one as well. Lots of lots of content in the app. If you want to go check it out, there's like programs for literally everything. And you can also ask me any questions that you want to ask about anything to do with your training and I reply to everyone. But uh, time, time for, for training. We have uh, nature's pre-workout, coffee obviously. You got a fire going. Ah. I've, I've run out of logs as well, so I just burn any bit of wood that I can find. Honestly, I've actually really started to enjoy these cold winter sessions. Like, feels like minus four at the moment, and it, and it does feel cold, but there's something just about being outside for a, a couple hours and like just sitting by the fire, you've got the stars, it's kind of cold. It feels part of the challenge, but also makes it more enjoyable. The only issue is that all of my clothes just smell like smoke right now. So for the leg day, I've got a new bit of equipment that wasn't in my uh, home gym video that I did a couple of weeks ago. This is a new one, it arrived the other day. Oh, let me show you. Bench. Full disclosure, I didn't pay for this. This was given to me by Basebox, but I've worked with them in the past and they're a good company, they do good stuff. And I've never actually used one of these before. I'm used to more just like makeshift setups when it comes to various different ways of like jamming your feet under places. Yeah, been using this for the past couple of weeks and I'm liking it. I've sort of set myself a bit of a goal of achieving a full Nordic, full natural hamstring curl, which at 6'4", some long levers, pretty achievable, hopefully in the next sort of 10 to 12 weeks, maybe, <laughs> optimistically. 
Let me answer first why the Nordic. I'll put a couple of links down below to a few bigger studies, more of the meta analysis and stuff. But essentially, there's a big correlation between like sprinting, athletic performance, explosivity, reduction in injuries, especially hamstring, well, hamstring injuries, I think by like 50% or something. And arguably some carryover to improving overall strength for lifts like squat and deadlift. It's currently looking like there's gonna be no gyms open for the next while in the UK. I thought putting some time and effort into training Nordics is gonna be a pretty productive way at one, just improving my lower body strength athleticism in general. Uh, two, it's kind of a cool move to do, but also three, it's gonna help support that, that goal. Start working towards it a little bit. Now, I will say that I haven't quite decided how exactly I'm gonna go about training it. I'm still experimenting for a couple of weeks with some different drills, some different ideas, and then I'm gonna sort of sit down and write a, a bit of a plan to actually specifically target this and see if I can get towards that full rep eventually. Oh, why do I get instant cramp? Oh. Take two. This isn't my working set, by the way. Just, uh, just playing with some things. So, um, the one thing I have been playing with is, is partials, and um, it's more about trying to do these with still having the torso and extended position. So often you'll see people as a beginner doing reps with basically just a hip hinge. There's almost like no, no change in the, the knee flexion position, kind of like this. And then the idea is that you try to get progressively more extended as you go down. But I've been trying to keep as much as possible a small angle at the hip and trying to keep it straight as possible. So that's either doing assisted negative, so like lowering down, using the hands as little as possible, and then pulling back up, or playing the first exercise with partials. So I'm kind of playing around with lots of different things at the moment, as well as reading some studies and then trying to learn from others from some other coaches. If you're kind of in this space, you probably would have heard of knees over toe guy, um, Ben, who I've followed for a long time and I keep getting accused that I'm stealing his stuff but if you understand where this stuff comes from which is not Ben although he's a great practitioner a lot of it's from Poliquin and just generally sports science places as well but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go a little bit more in depth in this one it's not something I'm super knowledgeable about from where I can, lowering for a full range. I like the concept, not sure I love the application. Keep playing. These are hard, man. Oh, odd. Oh, I hate these so much. I've never, these ones I've always struggled with actually. Um, they've always been super hard for me. To be honest with you, the only progress I have seen, like these are better than they were, is just being consistent with them. So I don't know if I love that idea. Um, as I said, I'm testing different bits and pieces from what I've been reading for the last couple of weeks. Sometimes it's easy to overcomplicate things. Just doing it, doing it consistently is what matters. If you haven't done these before and you're doing pretty intensely, the DOMs are gonna be, yeah, they're gonna be real. <sighs> if you've never, done split squats before, an absolute must, not for just strength reasons, there is some strength gain, but also just for like everything squat mobility wise, there's ankle, hip, 
There's the hip flexor of the back leg. What are the best bang for your buck leg drills out there? I've actually done a whole video on this. And again, I'll link that down below. <sighs> to be honest with you, that's basically my strength section of the training done. Um, I try to keep things pretty basic. There's no point adding too much complexity to it especially because I can't really work massively towards my main goals at the moment. I'm just kind of taking things taking over and using that energy to spend on some more flexibility work and other goals. I get asked this actually all the time whether I do cardio or not. In, in general, the answer is no. Like I do my morning walks and that's about it. But I have been adding a little bit of, I guess what you would equate to hit style training now at the end of leg sessions. I hate going for runs, plus runs can affect negatively flexibility. I don't have a bike, can't go swimming, well, I can go swimming for about five minutes, but it's pretty freezing. So um, this is kind of a happy medium for me with doing a bit of cardio, but not doing cardio at the same time. So essentially, I pick a movement and then I set a timer and I try to do as much moving as possible during that time and as little resting as possible. And that's kind of the cardio. If you really wanted to, you could do this with like handstand kickups or something, uh, but I'm doing it with some weird martial arts like stuff. So shout out to Emmett for this idea kind of a, a sly way of adding in the elements of cardio or the effects of some very basic cardio without actually doing cardio. Now I'm definitely not arguing for this replacing cardio but I don't really have anything goal-wise related to cardio it's just elevating that heart rate for a period of time it's more than enough. As usual, finish with uh, flexibility work at the end of strength sessions. Today is front splits. I'm just warming up for that. Just uh, a quick tip for you for anyone doing front splits. Always worth checking your hip flexor flexibility, but specifically your quad flexibility, because quads can inhibit quite a lot that hip extension and that hip flexor flexibility. So I like to usually do like as a warm up for my front split work, just some, some quad stretching, just to help open things up. Now, as, uh, as much as possible, I try to have my flexibility work kind of built into strength sessions. So, you know, a good example is that the front foot split squat is great for hip flex flexibility. Also kind of this deep hip flexion flexibility uh, and some ankle stuff. But obviously, like, if you're gonna achieve things like front split, middle split, pancake, all that sort of stuff, you need the specific work afterwards. So, I'm actually doing the same as the last session, which is a lot of work on the hip flexor for the front split. Just get into some of the suffering. people spend a lot of time working on hamstrings which is fair enough hamstrings are a big part of it but the biggest part is the hip flex just doing more front more hip flexor work will definitely speed up your front split progress a nice easy test that you can do hip flexor wise if we can get kind of a bit past neutral 90 so this hand here is perfect tilt neutral position nice to ground between femur and hip Really from here, if we can get adequate hip extension, then we're not gonna have a problem with front split. It's gonna be all down to that back hip. I mean, just go back and look at the angle of my hips when I was in that front split just then, or close to front split, and you'll see how much comes from the back leg. extent of my flexibility training for front split because it's about all the work it needs right now um, as I said like hip flexors are the limiting factor so I tend to spend at the end of it just some more time in a relaxed 
hip flexor stretch, just doing a little bit of PNF and just sitting and feeling out. I did actually post a, a hip flexor stretching video. It was like a five minute hip flexor stretch, literally like five minutes on one side. And I found that with myself and various other people I've coached that that's been pretty effective just for kind of unlocking the hips, um, spending a little bit more time even on a daily basis with especially, especially hip flexor stuff. Just need some time to like peel back all of these levels here. So I'm just gonna chill out here. And uh, yeah, that's basically the session. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a little bit of a random training session, really. I feel like at the moment in my training, I'm doing a lot of experimenting, which I haven't done for a while. So it's fun to try some different ideas and um, some different concepts that aren't necessarily conventional. And a lot of it's really just about applying different principles from outside of this space to see if they can make better results and have progress with better things. So ultimately, I'm gonna pass them on to you guys as well. So I would love to know your thoughts on today's episode though. If you leave a comment in the comment section down below, let me know, yeah, what you thought of the session. Um, if you have any tips for the Nordic curls, I know some people are super strong at them out there. As I said, I, I always read through the comments and, and hear what you guys have to say. So join the conversation. Whilst you're down there, you can also hit that thumbs up button and support the channel right next to it. Is that subscribe button if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But that's basically been it this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.